So here we are with the OG Pixel XL. I've lived with it for a little while now and I'm ready to let you know just how well it holds up here in 2021. Before then though, around 96 to 97% of you out there watching are not subscribers. So let's change that by slapping the button and turning on all notifications for more long-term looks at hardware, just like the Pixel XL and much more on top throughout the year. And then if you want to take the conversation even further still, be sure to join the official channel Discord where you'll find all sorts of wallpapers, snippets, behind the scenes, Q&A and more on top. So it's encroaching upon five years since the first Pixel launched and while the series hasn't quite captured the imagination of the public in ways that Google would have wanted, there's just something about a Pixel that's really, really hard to quantify. I'd never actually used the Pixel XL at least until a few weeks ago and after living with Android Nougat for a little while, I did eventually slap Android 10 on which is of course the last official update you can install here. Honestly, even the older build really didn't leave me wanting or not able to do anything that I would do today. Before we get deeper into the software though, let's talk about the design and what has aged well and what unfortunately hasn't since 2016. For me, the aluminium chassis is truly elegant and for those, well, maybe or weren't unaware, HTC actually designed the original Pixel and Pixel XL which is why there are some hardware similarities with some HTC devices released in and around the same time frame. The actual frame of the Pixel XL has a double chamfer, which makes it surprisingly nice to hold. And although curved edges are on newer models, and personally I do actually like this approach as it's quite a nice way to soften corners, but gives a slight edge to grip a hold of, at least in your hand. Another thing I hadn't actually known about with the Pixel XL is that it has a very minor wedge shape, getting around a millimeter or so thicker towards the camera area, than near the bottom edge. You probably won't notice, but I thought it was an interesting little design quirk that you don't often see or something that you wouldn't necessarily see from newer devices. It's also actually a lot lighter than the metal build suggests. I think I expected it to be heavy, but it's actually fine. Uh, would I like it to be a little lighter? Well, sure. But even though this was a massive phone when it launched in 2016, it's fairly average by 2021 standards. I'm a big fan of the hand feel here too, as the glass visor at the top feels smooth and slick. While the aluminium chassis has a very minor abrasive trademark abrasive feeling that in, is in direct contradiction to that description, although it feels relatively soft. I'm dancing around a quick way of saying that the two different materials feel good in various ways. The Pixel XL is just well machined and well refined, something that was missing from the Nexus 6P a little bit and the cheaper Nexus series devices. If you can remember the excellent HTC M8 and HTC 10, there are some major similarities and consistencies, but with a little bit of Google flavor thrown in there for good measure. Flipping around to the display though, and you can see just how far general smartphone design has come. Yes, we've dropped metal for the most part, but the 16 by nine aspect ratio display really does feel like a step backwards, at least from a purely aesthetic perspective. Surprisingly, this is still a fairly solid AMOLED panel despite its age too. For starters, it's QHD, which is a huge selling point and it's almost weird to think that smartphones have dropped display resolution down to full HD or full HD plus in recent years because despite some brightness issues, the Pixel XL display really does hang in there fairly well. Compared to smartphones you can pick up now, I'd even tentatively say that the, this is probably the most usable one handed without having to strain too much or at least stretch too much. I don't think that's the case for everyone, but I think it's pretty doable. Viewing angles are pretty solid content looks good and it doesn't really matter too much that it is 60 hertz in hindsight it's an amoled too so that does mean that dark mode does help battery or boost battery life which will always be a major benefit over an lcd panel you'll need to work out though if you can deal with a massive forehead and chin i'm just disappointed at the lack of front facing stereo speakers because there is plenty of space for htc to have at least added them for the pixel xl model plus the nexus 6p prior to this did have exceptional speakers for the time, and no Pixel yet has had true front facing stereo speakers since. The boring frame speaker is a little far too easy to cover and muffle, but the added bonus is that there is a headphone port. It's here, but I would have preferred that it at the bottom of the chassis rather than at the top, as when you pull it out of your pocket, it sometimes means a little bit of hand shuffling to get the phone facing in the right direction, or at least it does for me. Given the age, I'm struggling to fault the hardware too much though, Sure, it has aged and looks very much, at least from the front, like the iPhone 6 through the iPhone 8 series. But given the comparisons between the Pixel and the iOS of Android stuff up on launch, that kind of makes sense. It's not going to win any awards for its looks, but that's fine because the software and the camera are still where the Pixel shines pretty brightly. 
So as I mentioned right up top, the Pixel received its last update in 2019, which rounded out three years of full OS upgrades, which took the device from Android Nougat all the way to Android 10. At least until recently, no other Android smartphone released in 2016 has received as much official support as this. Samsung has cleaned up their act and confirmed that devices will get at least three years of OS upgrades, but the Pixel was the OG, at least in terms of long-term support, at least when this phone released it. As I mentioned, I actually ran Android Nougat for a little while upon opening the Pixel XL to get a better understanding as to why this is a big deal and why, while it wasn't terrible, being able to get a fairly recent and sizable upgrade to Android 10 has made this phone far better in terms of performance and even battery longevity. One of the biggest unsung reasons why the, these updates are important is for security and a bigger one is feature set. Google's version of Android is at least my favourite bar none and it's clean, it's concise and while there are features that are definitely needed or missing, it's arguably the best way to experience the platform. More and more of Android is being decoupled as well from the core OS meaning that Google Play services or Google Play service updates might end up being more important in the long term because even though you're stuck on Android 10 officially, you can still be able to access neat little things like nearby share, which is kind of like the Android equivalent of AirDrop and you don't need an update to Android 11. Android 10 also introduced the gesture navigation system to the Pixel, which replaces the three button nav. I think on a 16 by nine screen, it makes a hell of a difference as you regain a sliver or at least a sliver of the display meaning that apps give you a few more pixels, a few extra pixels. I can't say it changes things drastically, but I do think it's a neat little bonus, at least for usability. I can't massively fault the performance as so long as you stay within the bounds of general usage, everything is fine on the Pixel XL. I wouldn't really call things snappy as there are some sizable hangs and lag when using certain portions of say the settings menu or when loading up the Google Play Store. But once it's warmed up, it's surprisingly how well most applications actually run. As I mentioned, you'll notice a fair bit of lag every now and again, which should only put down to the old chipset and slower storage, but 4GB of RAM actually seems to be enough to keep things chugging along nicely. Although to contradict that, if I have a fair amount of apps running and I start trying to switch, things do need a refresh after being reopened. If you play games as well, I think you're probably going to run into or lose progress. Gaming is somewhere where the Pixel XL falters quite a lot and I just don't recommend playing anything beyond simple puzzle titles. If you want 3D games, something like Stadia or GeForce Now might be the way to go. Also, I have to note, 32 gigabytes on the base storage model is nowhere near enough storage, at least at this stage of 2021. You can easily fill that up after taking some photos and installing a few apps and games. So if you can pick up the 128 gigabyte model, then I would say go for that one. The fingerprint scanner on the rear though, that's pretty fast. I like that it's in a little glass kind of window as well. And it's in that perfect position for quickly getting into the main home screen. And then there's a bonus of a 3.5 millimeter headphone port. Unless you're happy to go with an A-series Pixel, then this is actually the only mainline device to come with a headphone port. And of course, Google did protest too much during the launch, only to yank it from the Pixel 2. So it is a little bit of a misnomer. Obviously, I was quite lucky in picking up a brand new Pixel XL that was sealed for however many years, but it has fairly solid battery for me. And I don't want to gloss over things too much, but I can only imagine that if you do pick up a used device, then it will need to have the battery replaced fairly quickly. Naturally, this was sealed, so, and I opened it just a few months ago, which means the degradation is fairly minimal. Even with Android 10 installed, it's still managing to get me to the latter half of the day with no real issues. I've seen around four to five hours of screen on time a few times, but you're probably talking closer to two or three with a healthy battery, unless you can optimize your usage to get way above that. I mean, it's a decently sized 3,450 milliamp hour cell, but the fact that the Snapdragon 821 isn't the most efficient and with a QHD display at the front, you're not gonna get the insane lifespans even with the latest OS update that might make some savings here and there. Then factor in just how much of a toll 18 watt charging has had on that battery over the past four or so years and being re realistic, lifespan is probably gonna be a problem with a Pixel XL. Of course though, Google's core selling point of the entire Pixel series has been camera performance. And when you consider the age of this smartphone, it's really hard not to be impressed. And in some cases, wowed. Android Authority has done a fantastic uh, comparison of the Pixel 1 and the Pixel 5 to show just that not really that much has changed in the grand scheme of things, saving a few important areas. So I will link that below if you do wanna check that one out. I can honestly hand on heart say though that I haven't been disappointed with the camera on the Pixel XL at any point since picking it back up and using it day to day. Nightsight even joined the party, I think with Android Pie, 
and it gives another shooting mode that wasn't even dreamed of when most phones released back in 2016. Google's post-processing does all of the legwork so the fairly modest 12 megapixel Sony IMX378 sensor gets a big lift in almost all areas. It's not all roses though, but because once you punch in a little, it does get a little bit grainy and there are artifacts here and there. Plus highlight control and overexposed portions are often a bit of a problem, but take a snap and wait for the processing to finish and hell, you'd be hard pressed in most cases to work out what era of smartphone the photos were actually taken within. Dynamic range and color control is pretty fantastic and it's just really nice to use the Pixel even though it is an older device. You're only really missing out on a few focal lengths, but kudos to Google's camera team for really pushing the boundaries the first time around here. If you like sharp, contrasty images, then I think you'll be right at home. And while you might be missing a few pixels, it's pretty fantastic. Plus, the Google camera app looks a lot nicer and neater than most other stock implementations, but you do miss out on portrait mode. I'm not really sure why, but lens blur still does OK, all things considered. So the bottom line is that the Pixel XL is one of a very few old smartphones I can actively recommend even taking a look at. It really does hold up fantastically for a nearly five year old smartphone, mainly due to amazing software experiences and fairly recent updates. If you can get one in decent condition, it might be worth picking up as a backup device. I would say though that the Pixel 4a is probably a way better smartphone, even with lower mid range internals. It absolutely floors the Pixel XL in almost every area performance and battery being prime portions. I gotta say though, I'm still pretty amazed at what the Pixel XL can do though. It's a phone that came out the same year as a Galaxy S7 and it hammers the Samsung in just about every department, at least through the lens of 2021. So there we have it, the fantastic OG Pixel XL. Let me know how it's treating you if you have managed to hold on. But that's it, that's the video. Remember to sub if you enjoyed this look back at the original Google Pixel. No problems. If not, I'll still be here plugging away. But until next time, I'll catch you in a bit.